Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falca Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today, it's gonna be a Midnight Madness Patreon game featuring Mac Winston. You know this guy, bottom left of Ancient Cistern, it is Mac Winston. And in the top right, it is the enemy. It is Gizwi. Gizwi? Gizwi? Something like that. He's a Blizzard player. Woof! Alright, so it's gonna be a PBZ here for Mac Winston, who's a patron of mine at patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin. Gives him the right to send me any replay once a month, and I will cast it and post it on the channel. So this is the one that he selected. He's at a month to get a good replay, so you know it's going to be good. They are always good from Mac here. Hmm, so drone scouting is Gizui. Awesome, dude. I really approve of drone scouting in this matchup. They can find out if you're being cannon rushed, or it's a Nexus first play, or like a two gate, or a proxy of some kind, and you can prepare for it. Instead of all of a sudden there are like, I don't know, like eight zealots at your base that you didn't scout and don't know about and you're unprepared for, which is very, very sad and a bad place to be. Anyway, the probe says, or the drone says, okay, no nexus first, no two gate, everything is A-OK, -okay, and we're just going to go home. Extractor pool here, very, very good. APM check, 76 APM for Gizwi and 95 APM for Mac Winston. Spiking. Spiking around 130 for Gizwi, around 200 for Mac Winston. So one get expanding time in here for Mac. Gas already, second pylon. Well, cybernetics core, second pylon. Bam, cybernetics core. And because you need it, a second pylon. Oh, wait, hold on. You, second pylon. Yeah, all right, cool. Second pylon on the way. Geez, weave. Why is the drone chasing this probe so much? Yeah, I think the drone's been chasing the probe since they met down here. He chased them all the way back to the Zerg base and all the way back almost to the Protoss base and then back the other way again. This drone needs to stop doing this. I mean, I guess keeping an eye on him in case this probe wants to throw up a proxy or something is not the worst thing in the world. And at this level, it's probably not going to kill you. Reasonable. Six lings on the way from Gizwi. Maybe a little bit more than you need. Uh, there's probably an adept coming. So having six lings is better than having none. Maybe four would be better. And you can definitely kill this probe with six lings, especially if it goes on creep, which it did. So third base timing for the Zerg needs to be about 10 seconds ago. <clears throat> Doesn't have the cash for it though because went for the six lings. Went for speed, which you can kind of delay speed to get a third base out quick if your opponent went one gate, ex one gate expand. You're not rushing to get speed out unless you're being aggressive yourself. You don't really need it for defense either. What did he just spend more money on? A queen? More drones? You need this third base unless you're planning on killing the Protoss now. Or in the next two minutes. Which, sure, maybe you're going to Ling Flood, maybe Bailing Bust this guy off of two bases. But if you're not doing that every second, your third base is late. You're dying, my friend. Gizwi. Gizwi. Okay, well, a 320, I guess, is not as bad as it could have been. But it still could have been a 230, man. Or a 240 would have been better. Ah, well, he's getting spores up at 330, which I can't get mad at. Spores, safety spores against DTs and oracles and void rays and all sorts of stuff are going to be good. And look, it is a void ray from Mac. So void ray, no, mostly to kill overlords. You don't really harass with void rays just because queens, like a one-on-one, -on -one, a queen will beat a void ray, which is just like kind of ridiculous. But void rays can get out of there. There's no reason that the void ray need to stick around and die to a queen. Ooh, that adept got sniped. Probably should have been microed a tiny bit and could have shaded out of there. Oh, it's a Roach Warren from Gizwi. Hmm. I mean, Roaches are really good for the next about 10 minutes of the game. Maybe a little bit less, depending on what's going on here for Mac. I mean, obviously, if he's going Mass Void Ray, Roaches are just going to kill you. You will make Roaches and you will die. But anything else, right? Zealots, Adepts, Stalkers. I guess Immortals are a major problem for you if you're going Roaches. But other than that... Roach is a pretty safe bet. Third base on the way for Mac, which is Sling Scouts. Big fan of this Sling Scout from Gizwi. Like, huge fan. This probe is just going to die. Oh, it's running, but speed is good. Speed is so good. And then the Void Ray kills him as he tries to flee. Another couple Lings heading on down. I don't know what your plan is exactly, Mr. Two Lings. Maybe to scout to see if there's, like, 
A crazy fourth base? Okay, so check it to see if there's a crazy fourth base for Mac. Nope! No crazy fourth base of which to speak. See, Void Ray doesn't want to fight the Queen either. Got out of there as soon as the Queen stopped laying that creep tumor. Creep, uh, the Queen didn't want to fight either, though. Yes, cannon shield battery adept. Zealots here, too. This is a tough nut to crack if you happen to be a bunch of Zerglings, which... These guys, are they're all going to die. Either they back out. Oh, I am not used to seeing that kind of back out at this level of StarCraft. Gizui, loving it. But also, fourth base timing, please. You're coming up. You are at 530. Your opponent has a third. You really need a fourth base. I know you want a Baneling Nest. I know you want to drone your face off. I get it. But you're behind. You're on three base to three base. Max got 49 probes. You're 44 drones. You don't have a fourth base at all. Good scout in. See, I mean, you didn't see a lot. You saw Twilight Council researching for charge. Sure. Templar Archives, too. Not a big surprise. Look at this. Max trying to get a fourth base on you, and you're not even thinking about a fourth base. Dude! If you're trying to, like, three base Roach Ravager way to victory here, I, I, I do appreciate the effort, and I think it's a good idea. But you're not doing that. You've got queens and wings. You're producing four roaches. Yep. So Mac is absolutely crushing the first seven to eight to nine to ten minutes of this game. He is ahead in every sense of the word ahead. I mean, I guess not the sense where he'd be a literal head, like a disembodied head or something. Uh, but other than that, he's definitely ahead. Fourth base. Oh my gosh. Giz okay, so Gizwi wants to make me have an aneurysm. We're almost at seven minutes, my guy. Either you're going three base, some kind of an attack, or you are getting a fourth base two minutes ago. Okay, well, the seven minute fourth it is. At the same time, the Protoss gets their fourth base, which you just scouted, by the way. You know Mac has four bases. You need to expand again, Gizwi. You gotta do it. You've got a bunch of money in the bank. I, the Spire, I like the idea, considering it's not Phoenix, nor are there really not a lot that can deal with Mutas here, right? This army is a Stalker, an Adept, and a Void Ray, and more Adepts and Zealots coming in. So yeah, you show up with like 24 Mutas, you win. I guess you have to do a little Storm Dodging, which for Mutas is not that hard. But you can win this thing. Why are there drones here? Do you have a Rally? You have a drone rally. You had a drone rally over there. No, you still do. You still have it. Well, there. What the? What is this one? Does he not know how drone rallies? No, that's a. That's not a drone rally. That's not a worker rally. That's a unit rally. I don't know how these drones got up here. He must have fixed the worker rally. Okay, so look. Basic analysis here is that our guy Gizwi's on four bases, and Matt Quinson is also on. Four bases. This Void Ray guy needs to be so careful. Oh, it's not being careful. But that's okay, because Void Rays are fast. Who needs them to be... <laughs> oh, I've complained about this a lot, but seriously, giving Void Rays a speed buff? Just a base speed buff so they can run away more easily from things? I I don't know if they needed it. Hive on the way, Roachling, Bane, sort of. It's a similar army value, but... And Gizui's at 83 drones to 71 probes. I'm okay. I mean... And he's expanding. Hey, I didn't have to... Well... I did have to tell you to expand here a few times before you did, and it's been two minutes. So expansion timing's not great. Ooh, look at Macaroonie. Macaroon. Throwing up three more Stargates. Getting a fleet beacon. Let's go. Getting plus one, two. Oh, gosh. Gizui's going to be caught entirely by surprise by this carrier stuff, isn't he? And then he's just going to die. Look, carriers are not overpowered in StarCraft II at the professional level. They they are. They are here at the Minrake Madness lower level uh, levels. Lower level levels. Good, good, good casting here, Falcon. Yep, carrier's on the way. The Brave Noob World style levels. Yep. So, good job. So, Gizui's like, wow, I'm directly countering whatever the heck Mac Winston is doing here just by having roaches and veins. This is great. 
And then carriers are being built back home. Is that a second spire? Did he... Wait, 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 wait. No, it is a second spire. Oh, this is interesting. Maybe he smells it. He's like, this guy, he's turtling a bit here. Turtling can be an indication that your enemy Protoss is going for carriers. So he's got a second spire coming in. And if he's got five bases with all this gas rolling, which he doesn't yet, but he will. And he could maybe have enough corruptors to deal with these carriers. You gotta worry about them getting stormed. You gotta worry about void rays wiping the corruptors out during the battle too. It's tricky. It's very tricky. But it's doable here from Gizwi. Yeah, he's effectively maxed out on Rotoravager Hydra Bane. Can he... I don't know. Can he kill any of these bases? He's going to try! Pretty decent storm dodge for a guy at the Mindrick Madness level. APM spiking 3-400 here from Gizwi. Mac Winston, round 200 himself. All right, Zerg playing fast. So yeah, this is where you kind of need to get rid of some of these cannons and shield batteries and then back out. You do not want to attack into a Terran, a Terran base with an army or a Protoss base with an army at it either. Okay, extra hard walling here with gateways that I don't think Mac even necessarily wants. Corruptor's on the way. He knows about the carriers now. But he had the double spire coming up, so he intuited it beforehand anyway. And then he's like, I really don't have enough to deal with these carriers. But some Hydras. Carrier group's not that big. It's only four. Four carriers is carriers you can deal... Well, Hydras can deal with that number of carriers, I guess, is what I'm trying to say here. Once the carrier group gets up to around seven, eight, or nine, then suddenly infinite hydras can't kill them. Because the carriers can stack and the hydras kind of have to like get close and then taking hits the whole time or there's guys in the back who can't hit anything, it's bad. I love this. I mean, if you're a Protoss player and you're not sending little zealot runbys into bases of your enemy, what are you doing with your life? You're doing it wrong. That's what I have to say. Mac is a beautiful shining example of how to use zealots to wipe out enemy bases. Before they can do anything about it. Bam. And then recalling the zealots out. Like four of them even made it out. Good job, boys. Well done. So bad. Because he's back on four bases. Mac Winston's happily on... Well, he's getting a fifth base now, which this overlord knows about. Yeah, this is an economic win for Mac. Gizwi, you know what a really good player would do is replace this base. Oh, he's doing it. Good man. Immediately replacing the base, but you're still down economically because this exists for Mac, which you're trying to remedy. I can support that. Mm, couldn't remedy it, unfortunately. Mac Winston's army shows up. So this is where you start splitting your army if you're Gizwi, right? Some of them are over here. Mac Winston sends his whole army to defend, but guess what? Surprise! There are a bunch of hiders and lurkers coming from this way. The two cannons die. Bam! Lurkers get in this mineral line. Everybody dies. And Max worrying about an attack that was a distraction, right? It's tricky. It really is. Gizwi expanding down the right side, by the way. Good job by him. Corruptors cannot engage with this because there's Archons on the ground now. There's Archons on the ground. Ooh, storming his own interceptors a little bit there. Kind of dicey, but man, yeah, give up with that. Viper's on the way. Going to try to Viper abduct carriers into the Corruptor Ball. Get them away from their Archon protectors. Always nice. Yeah, Ancient Cistern's got a lot of places to expand, but uh, we are running out of open options, aren't we? Resources lost, 3,800 for Gizwi, 3,200 for Mac. Kindness plating on the way from Gizwi. Uh, do you kind of like Ultras here? It's one of the reasons that Immortals are a pretty favored part of this composition, too, from Mac. We've got Archons. See, the thing is, the Archons and the Stalkers and the High Templar are going to get whacked by a sufficient number of Ultras. And once all those things are dead, then your Corruptors come in and kill the Carriers, and that's your GG. So that's why having some Immortals in your composition, once you know the enemy is going for Ultras, or maybe just in preparation for them, because you assume it will be Lurkers or it will be Ultras, and Immortals are going to be good against both of those. My gosh, Mac expanding again. So good. Such good expanding here from Mac. Oh, 
Oh, there's an abduct. Carrier does die. Parasitic bump spell usage by Gizwi. I like it. That's right. Nice feedback. Ooh, nice spell usage from Mac Winston, too. He's been storming, though. That's a bit of a whiff. Bit of a whiff. Oops, storm catches a bunch of these corruptors, but also a carrier dies. Look at him swinging back in. He knows what the Protoss wants to do. Nice. Another carrier gets sniped. But the Corruptors have looked, you know, better in the past. Is there enough ground here for the Zerg player to win the ground? Not with the Storms blanketing, it's not. Absolutely no. Army value, 97 to 81, producing Hydras, Roaches at a time here. Ten at a time for each. He needs them because Mac is going to take down that 12 o'clock base for the second time today with his Archons. With their plus three attack. And the hatch goes down. Beautifully executed here. Carrier count, not what it was. Ooh, maybe overmaking Corruptors a little bit here is Gizwi. There are only two carriers left. Oh, just kidding. Mac is making more of those. Good job, Gizwi. Way to read what your opponent is doing without knowing what your opponent is doing. Hmm. Suspicious. I don't know. I would be assumed the carrier production had stopped, but Mac going for it. Trying to storm dodge, trying to pick off individual interceptors. I mean, forcing those to get replaced. Max got a 5,000 mineral bank. It's not that huge of a deal. <sighs> so Gizwi loses a hatch. Yeah, he's just getting pulled apart here. Corruptors kind of kiting, fighting interceptors. It's only two carriers. Interceptor count is not huge. It's 11 right now. Those four additional carriers are not here yet. They will add to that carrier count immensely. Got a lurker. Gizwi does. Interesting to have a lurker. Max, like, well, if I keep picking off the outside bases of my Zerg opponent. Mm, carrier down. Corruptor takes some storms in payment. That's how this works. That's another carrier down. Storm taken in payment. One Corruptor dies. The rest of them are pretty injured. This is where you want to transfuse. You have queens out there, right? You've got six queens. I'd bring them and start transfusing these Corruptors, honestly. I got plus two. two. They have two, two upgrades, too. This is nice. Good upgrades from Gizwi. Only plus one air attack here from Mac. He's getting out upgraded on the air front. I mean, that said, he's got plus three ground, and there's, I mean, I guess plus three melee is done from Gizwi. Yeah, he needs to start, I'd say, firing up ultras, lings. He's going Greater Spire here, which pretty good too, honestly, against Archons especially. Okay, high ground. Lurker gets sniped before he could burrow. Brutal stuff there. That is <laughs> Poor Lurker having a tough time with it. Mm, there's an abduct. And a two-volley snipe. Once again, if these carriers had better armor upgrades, they would survive more shots against these Corruptors. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, it's just Gizwi economically is not able to keep up with what Mac is doing here. Uh, I'm surprised Mac hasn't expanded in a while. This top left seems like a good place to go. Bottom right's a little bit scary. It's pretty close to the Zerg, but, I mean, you're running out of safe spots to be, you know? That's another dead... Okay. So Gizwi very patiently whittling down. Whittling down these carriers. There's seven of them on... Well, seven of them have died. I was reading that backwards. There are four again. So we're back to four. Fifth is on the way. Ultralisks in production from Gizwi. Let's see what that's going to be all about. And retaking the 12 o'clock base for the third time. So, can he handle it? Do this little... This is why you want to throw up a couple spines at your bases. Because this will happen. Zealots will show up and your base will die. And the 12 o'clock is going to get killed too. All right, Gizwi. I like you have a bank and you're maxed out. That's awesome. Coming up the back side, Ultras. The Archons are kind of stuck. Stalker's doing some pretty decent damage here too. Ultras taking a ton of damage there. And yes, distracting everybody enough so that the Corruptors come in and kill every one of those carriers. So, hmm, 81 to 42 army supply in favor of the Zerg player Gizwi. Remaxing Hydras, Broodlords, Corruptors. <gasps> Gizwi, maybe? Maybe he can do this? If the Broodlords show up, Max not going to have a big answer to that. He's got a carrier, no Tempests. 
two stalkers. Uh oh. This is not the composition that's going to make sense against a big Broodlord style army. And he uses injured corruptors to make the Broodlords, immediately bringing their HP back to 100. That's one of the major benefits of Zerg. It's your ability to take a wounded unit and turn it into a full HP better unit for money. Awesome. Okay, so engaging in Max's newest source of income, it's a smart choice. So these links have Adrenal, they do. So it's Adrenal Lings. Cr Broodlord showing up. Matt Winston responding with what he has. But what he has, I don't think, is a good answer. Okay, Archons are trying to get under these Broodlords to kill them. Broodlords, pull back. Broodlords, kite. Broodlords, there you go. Kiting Broodlords. Hydra's Roaches covering their buddies. Broodlings in here. Jump, 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 jump. Excellent. Oh, there is an immortal, but uh, he's kind of out of his element here against these broodlings, and he gets chased down and focused down and killed by broodlings. Woo! What an engagement here. There's even oh, there's even corruptors. Wait, what, was I wrong? Did he use did he use full health corruptors to make his broodlords? He shouldn't have done that. Just a thought. Oh, I think Max gonna lose it here. This is a beautiful play from Gizwi. Oh my gosh, this is so good from Gizwi. Army value 85 to 62. Mac. Trying to expand in all of this chaos, but throwing in some Void Rays. I like that. Void Rays are going to be good against the Broodlords and the Corruptors. Not as good against these Hydras, though, that do have... Oh, three attack and two armor. He's working on threes. Give him a chance here. Giz oh, Gizwi pulls back. While Mac expands, he holds on to this base that didn't even die. Oh, I don't know. I think he needed to keep going there. I really think he could have gotten a ton more damage there, but he pulled back out of a sense of abundance of caution. Oh, boy. Four Ultralisks on the way. That Immortal died, so he's going to be all right. I almost feel like you need more Broodlords here. Four or five is fine, but like 12 Broodlords raining fire down upon all of this ground stuff. While the Corruptors are dealing with the Carriers, would be pretty effective. Gizwi expanding himself to this low grounder with only one Vespian gas. Same with the Mac is taken on the other side of his, uh, his side of the map. He's trying to see if he can expand up this top left side. That would be good. Ultras are out with their little uh, mech skin here. I think that's what this is. Yeah, trying to come up a ramp. Ultras, Hydras, the, yeah, same thing. Zerg army's there. Oh, look, he was trying to throw up spines. Oh, spores, never mind. He's trying to throw up spores. This is not gonna work. Wings busting up to this attempt, forcing a cancel on Mac Winston's attempt to expand up this left side even more. Hydras do pretty well against Zealots. And by that I mean, with spine support and ling support, they can do it. All right, excellent job, boys. Whew. One eighty three to one eighty seven supply. This has been a knockdown drag em out title fight kind of a game between these two players. Obviously, a lesser skilled Zerg player would have already died. But he knows when to retreat. He knows how to use spell casters. He knows how to get compositions to deal with what the Protoss is doing. And it's allowing him to stay alive. Is he gonna win this game? I don't know. Good storm there. Brood Lords. Trying to snipe high Templar. Kind of walking into death a little bit here, though. The Broodlords... Uh-oh. Retreating is not really their strong suit, actually. So Hydras are standing in, trying to get their Broodlords alive by killing the Void Rays, killing the Carriers. The Ultras and Roaches are winning on the ground. Void Rays are trying to clear those dudes out, and they're going to do it. But these Hydras are really MVPs right now. Look at these Hydras, wiping out Void Rays, wiping out Stalkers. Ultra's doing tanking on the ground so the Hydras can do what they need to do. 88 to 24 army supply and Gizwi backs out again. He doesn't feel good about his army. He doesn't feel good about what Mac has. Oh man, if he, mm, like it's hard for me to say being cautious is killing you. Cause it is smart. It is smart at this level. Mac's a good enough player. You don't want to overextend against him. 
But if he loses this game, I think it's because he pulled out two times when he shouldn't have. I think that's going to be my interpretation. Okay, making some Lurker to do with all these Zealots that he just caught wind of. The Zealots are not going to be part of that battle, though, because they're heading up to the 12 o'clock. Or maybe accidentally scouting this base, which they definitely didn't know about until now. This one brew board. Oh, man. Oh, the Hydras are leaving. So the Void Rays wipe that out. This hatch does die. Hydraling Bane deals with Zealots very, very quickly. Of course, Banelings die when they detonate, so it hurts your army value, too. It's not like an Immortal getting 37 kills against a Roach army. You know, the Immortal's still alive. It can keep killing stuff. Banelings are never going to be all that cost efficient. Which is why the Zerg player needs more bases than the Protoss player. Top left, he's got. Top right, he's getting... 96 to 96 army supply. This has been one of the better evenly matched Patreon games I've had in a while. It really seems like Gizwi's up to what Mac's throwing at him. Mac kind of trying to adjust to what Gizwi is doing. Gizwi adjusting to what Mac is doing. This is such a stressful part of the game, too. Where you're not sure how many bases they have. You don't know what their army composition is necessarily. Where are they going to strike? Ah, uh, sending the Corruptors over these cannons is a complete waste of Corruptors. He needs different control groups for sure. Oh, the Voiders want to engage with these Hydras. They will engage. The Hydras will do that. Thank you very much. Lurkers need to come in. They've got the Seismic Spines upgrade. They've got the Adaptive Talons. Heal through this, you filthy casual. That's what the Lurkers say to these Shield Batteries who are out of energy. By that, I mean there's one shield battery here. You know, again, I don't know if Corruptors are here to, like, tank damage. Mac Winston says, what up? Never mind. Let's counter with my Zealot Void Ray army to try to win this game. Okay, Gizwi does leave a few units behind and sends a bunch back to try to deal with whatever this is Mac Winston's doing. A ton of High Templar. Ooh, running into a spine crawler Forest Lurker. Dude, huge. Every Lurker spine is huge in this engagement. The Lurkers are desperate to get spines off on anything and everything. And then it's a recall out. Leave some hydras behind, or some lurkers behind to die. Zealots behind to die, good grief. So that's a base down for Mac. And then a failed attack there by Mac as well. So Gizwi, successful defense. 59 workers is really not gonna do it here. He really should be making more drones. But everybody's banks are kind of falling apart. Gizwi just made eight Broodlords. There are no Void Rays left. That's not a terrible idea. Bottom right base dead again. So look, Mac has killed six hatcheries today. Gizui's killed two Nexuses, which is great. This base is mined out. Don't worry about it. You want this one. You want all the fighting to be in the top left. And look, the Broodlords. Oh gosh, the Broodlords. Oh, the Immortals are gonna die to the Broodlords. No Immortals. <laughs> Yeah, top left base dies, but two immortals died, and these High Templar are in a butt-ton of trouble, too. They're trying to storm their way to victory here, but... Nope, Brew Lords have a little bit too much HP for that. Army value 135 to 42, and I think Gizwi has done it. I'm not ready to call it official GG yet, but... Yeah, it's 193 to 99 supply, as Todd would say, look at the supply. And I think Mac is dead. Hats off, man, to Mac for sending in a loss. I always appreciate players who don't have such a big, big ego, they'll never send me a loss. Because now every time I see a Mac Winston replay, you're like, oh yeah, this guy sends in losses sometimes so that I can, I don't know who's gonna win when I click on this. That's always a good feeling. It's never a great feeling to click on a StarCraft game and be like, yeah, I know who wins. Let's just get to the end, and we know who wins. And that's a GG well played from Mac and Gizwi. Pa I mean, one of the better Zerg players I have seen at this level of StarCraft. Getting the win here. An average of 190 APM. 251 currently, which is insane. 150 average APM for Mac. My goodness to gracious. Yeah, I thought Gizwi was dead. I thought he was dead when he was sitting on three bases against Mac forever. His fourth base was super late. It died three times. This base died. This base died. This base died. Mac Winston did such a good job killing bases today. 
But Gizwi knows how to use spellcasters. He was using Vipers really well. He doesn't just run headfirst into that Sky Toss hybrid army with Immortals on the ground and Archons on the ground. He picks at the edges, uses his speed to get away. The Corruptors are fast, like the Void Rays I were fast I complained about earlier, right? Just picking and picking and picking here. And yeah, adjusting his style of play to what Mac was doing, using Broodlords really, really well. Using Lurkers pretty effectively, Ultras, Hydras, Roaches, Banelings. There's nothing in the Zerg Force that I feel like he's uncomfortable with. Maybe Infestors. Not a lot of people use Infestors these days, but... Would have been good. All right. Fantastic. Truly, truly, truly great game there from both. 47,000 resources lost from Gizwi. And 66 for Mac. I mean, that is how you win a game of StarCraft as a Zerg. If you, your resources lost are 20,000 less than your Protoss opponent, you got to feel pretty good about yourself, man. 44 probes died. Three Nexuses went down. Seven hatcheries killed. That's a tough pill to swallow as a Protoss player to kill seven hatcheries and lose. 39 Corruptors died. Eight Ultras. Carrier count. 18 Carriers died. 20 Archons. Nothing's cheap there. 14 Void Rays, and 35 High Templar died. Some beautiful storms today, but I don't think the storms really paid for themselves. I don't think there were as many storms as there potentially could have been. Just my thought. So again, super hats off to Mac there. I love it when people send me losses every once in a while. But man... What a great game. Nice lead on to Mac. Again, it's a Patreon match, so check me out at patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin. <sighs> All right, so that's going to be it for me today. This is Ben, Falcon Paladin, coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself. Mm -hmm.